So let us analyze our find set operations as well. So we'll have a look at find set of x and see what is its amortized cost. Amortized cost. So as we said before, we'll be making use of the potential method. We'll be looking at phi q minus phi q minus 1 and so on in order to find it. So just before we do that, let us just look at what are the nodes that are affected on a find set x and then we will be in a position to understand what follows. So if we had some tree like this, and suppose this was our x, and this is our r, let us give names to these y, z, a, b, etc. Then which are the nodes that are going to get affected by this find set? The nodes that are going to get affected are this x, y, z, a, b and r to some extent. And as far as other nodes are concerned, now even if x had been having some gyrant or something, all the other nodes are not affected. Only the yellow markings are going to be affected. And so what is the effect that is going to happen? What we will have is, we will again have our r and all these a, b, c, d, etc. will be child names of it. We will have x, we will have y, we will have z, we will have a, we will have b, all as child nodes. If I had another child, a had another child and r had another two children as before. So our affected nodes as before are x, r, y, z, a, b, all the other nodes are not affected. So let us have a look at what is the actual cost. Actual cost. The number of affected nodes because these are cut and put here. So it costs some one in the sense that cutting it and adding it. So it is going to be OS where S is the number of nodes in path from x to r. So we will be always talking about this path because that is the way in which it is traversed and path. Okay. So whenever we talk about a path just assume that we are talking about going upwards like this. Okay. So our actual cost being OS it looks as if it is a very high cost because s could be arbitrarily large. right? Mm, it could be as lo long as a possible tree could be and uh, height could be in this case. So it has to get compensated if we want to get good, uh, good amortized costs. We will show that our amortized cost of a fine set is going to be O alpha n. Which means that if this actual cost has to end up with this amortized cost, we need to have a big fall in potential which is of the order of S. Right? So we will show that such a fall in potential happens. that a big five fall happens. How do we show that? So let us get on. So we claim that first of all we will see that how many nodes have an increase in potential. We can see that there are no nodes. Why? Because no rank increase. And what can possibly increase is the levels and iters. The increase in levels and iters only decreases the potential. It does not increase it. So there is no increase in potential. Uh, the next thing is what? How many nodes? Nodes five falls. And by how much? So now where do we have to look for that fall in potential or where do we have to look for the nodes? Clearly those are the ones that we highlighted before, right? The nodes along this path. Only these can have their potentials affected. All the others, they don't have any change in rank, level or writer, so their potentials don't change. So the, our candidates are these. So we claim that 
एस माइनस अल्फा एन प्लस टू नोड्स हैव फाइ क्यू माइनस फाइ क्यू माइनस वन ऑफ विच इज लेस देन इक्वल टू माइनस वन दैट इज सो मेनी नोड्स पोटेंशियल फॉल्स बाय एट लीस्ट वन इज इट लिट so why this alpha n and why that two and so on let us just see so the two part is easy to see we we'll see that first what are those two nodes that need not fall in potential so one is x itself if it is a root if it is a leaf that is i'm sorry so if it is a leaf Its potential will not change. It will remain a leaf, and its potential will be zero. The second thing is R. Why? Because it does not change. So, the only nodes. So, the two nodes listed in this way. They are. This, okay. Two. So now, what about this alpha n? By alpha n is the question. So we'll come next. So the claim is that all nodes x such that. they belong in the fine set path not leaf and root and have another node Y further up in the path with the same level, same level. That is, level X is equal to level Y. will have a fall in phi by at least 1 so we'll prove this we'll show that if there is a node x and there is further up another node y such that it has the same potential then x is going to have a fall in potential this is something we'll show so the role of the alpha n comes up here in the sense that when we count such nodes how many nodes have we left out from the count that leaving that two aside what we have left out is this thus excludes the last nodes in the path with a particular level value set it for example level equal to 0 so it means that in this path there is some last node with level 0 so that is excluded similarly there may be some node with level equal to 1 and last node with level equal to 1 and that is excluded and so on so we can imagine that there are going to be a very large number of nodes right and whereas levels have only some particular values as we can see level cannot uh, have arbitrary large values because if we increase the level very large the result is going to be a very large number so levels will be having so only some values the number of nodes could be very large depending it could be i mean depending on n it could be very very large so 
देर आर गोइंग टू बी रिपीटेड लेवल्स और मेनी नोट्स आर गोइंग टू शेयर द सेम लेवल सो वट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्सप्लोडिंग इज नोट्स दैट आर लास्ट वन हैविंग अ पर्टिकुलर लेवल so all the notes that are not last ones having a particular level are going to have a fall in potential is what we claim okay so let us see why we'll quickly look at that in the next slide so let us just take a sample path so let us give some names to the notes on that path so we'll take one sample node x this is our x and it has the level level x and this is our x dot p and let us take that there is some node y and level of y equal to level of x and so this is y dot p and so much above that we have our r okay so this being the scenario we'll show that x has a five fall by minus one at least. So how do we uh, show that? So we'll have a look at a number of things that we can uh, infer from this. One is that x dot rank. Less than x dot p dot rank. This is less than y dot rank. This is less than y dot p dot rank. And this is less than r dot rank. Because ranks are non-decreasing. Let us look at the second relation. Second relation that we have is a level x. Uh, iter of x, x dot rank is less than equal to x dot p dot rank. Another relation we know is that a level of x y dot rank is less than equal to y dot p dot rank. Which is less than R dot rank, right? So another thing that we know is that a level of x, iter of x plus one, x dot rank is greater than x dot p dot rank, right? That is the definition of iter and level, right? It has to be greater than P's rank. Otherwise, this would not have been iter of x. Iter of x would have been something larger. So now that we know all this, let us do the following. In one, we just apply a level x once more. Or rather, we apply yeah we apply uh, so uh, from two we can say that a level x iter x is going to be less than y dot rank right. So let us just apply a level once more. And what we get is that a level x iter x plus one is less than a level x y dot rank, and this we know to be from three. We know it to be less than r dot. It means that the iter of x has increased. Why? Because even by doing iter x plus one, it still remains less than r's rank. Which means that for node x, 